I think a lot of people don't just don't realize that like there's like actual people involved it's not just an app and like your food just doesn't magically like get downloaded into like onto your front porch they're like send me a picture of the business to so I can verify this closed and I'm like I don't know what business it is like an idiot I'm like do you guys know if there's like a place called soup works in the mall So can you first tell me how long you have been delivering? Uh, a couple weeks. Okay. And this is your first delivery gig since you were doing like pizza deliveries in college? Yeah. I mean, I have a robust history bringing food to people's houses. So right. it's good to get back into the industry that I love so much. But this this is like your first time doing like the web-based, you know, yeah newfangled app food delivery so what percentage of your deliveries would you say are ghost kitchen restaurants you um handle on that so in like a week i'll take 60 and maybe like three or four of them okay so not a but ton that might just be my market yeah yeah and also the deliveries i take because i'm super particular about the orders i'll take because like you can drive miles and miles and miles and get paid like three bucks. Yeah. Uh, so what information do you get up front that tells you whether you want to take an order? You get very little. It tells you like, so you get, when you have the app open, like it'll pop up and say like, hey, you got a offer from McDonald's and then it'll show you like a thumbnail of a map with like where you are, where you got to pick up and then where you got to deliver. And it'll give you like the minimum amount that you'll get paid for that. And that's about it. Okay. Um, but you kind of have an idea of how far you would have to go. Yeah. You see the total miles from okay. where you are now until where you got to drop the food off. Okay. Um, and I mean, like, you'll, so like, as far as like what, like the name of the place, like you don't. Like, you know the name of the place, but if it's like a ghost kitchen, you're not going to know where it's coming from. Okay, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, so you don't know what's the actual restaurant. You just get like an address. Once you, if you accept it, then it'll tell you, it'll give you an address. Sometimes in the instructions, like the pickup instructions, it'll tell you like, um, like one ghost kitchen around here that I get a lot is St. Peter. Okay. Um, and it'll be like your St. Peter order is being prepared by like this kebab place. Mm. Um, or I had one last week that kind of annoyed me. It was for Soup Works and it was at the mall. So I got to the mall at like nine o'clock at night and it, like I went to the food court because I'm like, oh, it's in the food court. It's probably Salad Works. And it gave me the address of the mall. It didn't give me the address. It didn't say anything about Salad Works. So I park at the food court and I go in and all the doors are locked. I'm like, ah, what the hell? So I drive around the mall and like everything is closed. And like most of the restaurants in this mall are right in the food court. There's a couple like on the perimeter. There's like a Dave and Buster's and a Primani Brothers and like a Buffalo Wild Wings, but not Soup Works. So I found a door to the mall that was open and like the mall was like closed. The only people that I could see on like my walk into like down that hallway to the main corridor was like a Verizon store was they were doing their cash out so I asked them I'm like like an idiot I'm like do you guys know if there's like a place called soup works in the mall and they just looked at me like like no there's salad works is that and I'm like no like I'm looking for soup works um yeah it's like kind of frustrating it's so did you find it what did that end up being no because everything was closed so I called and was like everything is closed here and they wanted a picture they're like send me a picture of the business to, so i can verify this closed and i'm like i don't know what business it is because it doesn't say anything it doesn't say anything about salad works um so i took a picture of the closed food court and was like here you go like that's the best i can do that's interesting because there was a place um that i was looking at here and most of the other ghost kitchens i found have an address and you can look up the address and see what restaurant it really is but this one was in the mall and the address was just for the whole mall yeah. and they actually had a pickup option it wasn't just delivery so i was like 
what if I wanted to do pickup? I wouldn't like, um, how would I know where to park? It's the I mean, largest mall in the country. You have to call them. Right. Well, so I, I did, I tried getting in touch with DoorDash and they were like, oh, we can't tell you until if you, if you actually place an order, then I guess they could give you more details or connect you to the actual business. So you could just ask them where they are. But I was like, I'm not going to place an order if I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, it's like kind of, kind of annoying. Um, I took one last night from a spot called Killer Wings. Um, but Killer Wings is housed inside a restaurant in a motel downtown that like routinely gets like bad health code violations. <laughs> and I wonder like the guy who ordered, who like tipped me very well and had like a nice drop off protocol at his house. Like, I wonder if he knew that he was getting food from this place that probably was not. contemplated. Probably not. No, probably not. So but whatever, I got paid <laughs> from my prerogative. So when you go to these restaurants, is there like a specific setup where like how that you would pick up the ghost kitchen order differently than the regular restaurant? No, just and like no, no one in any restaurant, like very few restaurants, do they actually like know what's going on? That was like, going to be my next question. Do they, do they understand it or are they just like, I'll make the food and put it in whichever bag? I mean, like I've worked in kitchens and like, you don't. Know, that's not like you get the order that comes through and you just make it and mm -hmm. put it out. Most restaurants like chains have really good procedures. They'll have like, like Chipotle will have like all the stuff spread out. Chick-fil-A is really good to deliver from. But um, like most like independent places, like mom and pop places, you walk in and you just like say who you're there for. And yeah, sometimes it's ready and sometimes it's not. And whatever so have you ever been to one of the ghost kitchens that's in just like a commercial kitchen by itself not inside an existing restaurant no i have not been to okay one do you think there's any of those around you it seems like they're more in cities um i mean i don't know i'm sure that there is but then again i'm like really particular about the orders i'll take because it's not it's not worth my the wear and tear on my vehicle i don't care about my time personally because like what else am I gonna I'm doing this to like get out of my house you know I don't I'm not gonna like put a million miles on my brand new car to like deliver somebody McDonald's you know um honestly the worst orders are like so like my delivery area like straddles the river so as the crow flies a place might be five miles away but it's mm -hmm. 18 miles to go north to hit a bridge and then go south Mm -hmm. So like the most annoying ones and I've learned over my time doing it like if somebody orders from like the cheap Chinese restaurant like way down south of town like they're doing it because it's a short distance and they're not like but it's going to be like an 18 mile drive for me and they're not mm -hmm. going to care mm -hmm. um, so like something like that I'm not going to do I try and like when I make the decision over whether or not I'm going to take it, I want $2 a mile. That usually works out for me that I can end up making like 30 bucks an hour doing it. Okay. That's not bad. Yeah. So from the delivery side of things, what in general is your opinion of ghost kitchens? Like, do you think they're a good way to bring extra business to restaurants or are they like destined to just be a disappointment in food and go away soon? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that they'll continue to exist because like business in general is like so decentralized anymore like with COVID mm -hmm. like people work from home and you never know it and I think it'll continue to exist because yeah like if you have like a ghost kitchen that's like in an Indian place you might get somebody buy from it who would never have who doesn't like Indian food you know right. as long as they tip I don't really care <laughs> do they pay the same as an order from like the regular restaurant I presume so. Yeah. I mean, it's all, it's based on miles driven, mm. how much you get paid. Um, but like certain places, like the people who eat from these places are just generally cheap and they're not like, like a McDonald's order. Like that sucks. Like, I can't imagine I doing McDonald's store to like the cost of having it delivered is 
doubling, right? right? Yeah. Like some of these orders that I take, I look at and I'm like, if I'm getting paid this much to do this, this person is paying that plus some, I don't know. Like I've never been a person to like willingly get food delivered because as like being on the other side of that, I'm like, I'm like, this is so stupid. Like you're going to pay this much more Mm -hmm. to get this delivered. Um, So that's not really my thing. Like I'm not into it. Her, like on to be on the receiving end of it but actually that's that is a related kind of question because when I do order from DoorDash I look for the ones with like free delivery or like 99 cent delivery does that impact you as the driver or you get paid the same I don't know okay what places charge it generally like so the way it works is there's like a base pay which is like usually like two or three bucks and then they'll have like a peak pay on top of that like if it's busy and they want to get more people driving during like like a like a peak hour they'll have like an extra dollar or an extra two dollars the highest one i've seen yet was an extra eight dollars on top of the base pay and then on top of that you get a tip too Mm -hmm. um but you don't always know if there's going to be a tip like you see like the minimum that you'll get when you accept the order but then after you're done and you complete it there might be more on top of that like if they tip 20 bucks you might only see that it's like an eight dollar order but then after you accept it it's like oh cool they tipped me 20 dollars thank you um and sometimes people give cash tips too but i don't see most of the people that i deliver to okay good you get to keep like a hundred percent of your tip right oh yeah yeah. Okay. Cause I know when we started getting like delivery food, I was very concerned about, um, cause I know some places don't give their delivery people like the full tip that the customer thinks they're giving. Yeah. I think, I think they all got sued. Did they all like do all it? Yeah. Okay. Got sued like within the last year and yeah. they now have to give a hundred percent of the tip, but it's like a good most, mi- most, what- people <laughs> most people don't. Tip, so, oh, well, I feel like especially uh, for like a pandemic food delivery, you have to expect to tip a certain percentage. But I was going to ask what, what in your opinion would be an appropriate pandemic food delivery tip percentage? Um, I don't necessarily know about like percentage with deliveries. My whole thing with delivery has always been like, I'm not going to order delivery if I can't put at least five bucks in the person's hand who's bringing it to me. Like, and that was like, when I delivered pizza 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that was like, my thing was like, if you're not tipping me five bucks for coming out here, then you suck. That's reasonable. Um, And I used to clean up delivering pizza. Like, Mm -hmm. so, I mean, this is like, it's like a pretty good deal. Like I do it a couple hours a night and I'll make like between 50 and 80 bucks a night and drive anywhere from like. 30 to 60 miles doing it so it's not too bad well anything else about ghost kitchens that you want to get out there to my tens of loyal viewers um don't be a dick like if you're gonna get something delivered like be cognizant of the person who is out like doing your and don't get a ton of drinks please like Mm. that's so annoying yeah like my first one that I took, my first one ever was eight milkshakes and four sodas from Chick-fil-A. What? Like I can, I can take four beverages in a, in a carrier and yeah. like watch that one carrier and make sure it doesn't tip over. I'll even do two, but like 12, <laughs> how am I even going to carry 12 beverages to your house? Um, and then I got there and she didn't have her steps cleared and she wanted me to leave it on the porch. So I left it at okay. the bottom of the steps, like on the street. Like I'm not breaking my milkshakes. I'm keep them dropping cold. your milkshakes and your diet Cokes yeah. walking up your icy unshovel steps. Like, oh nah, my gosh. You can come down and get that. And yes. you didn't even hit me. So it's okay. Yeah. So consider that your delivery driver is a real person. Yeah, like there's two I mean, hands like and a regular car on, on like an app, like you don't see the people. Um, and I also, I don't know if you can tip the staff that makes the food. Like, I, I don't, don't think know so. Yeah. Not through the food. app. Yeah. Cause like that, like, I feel like a lot of places, like I 
have delivered from a number of places that like have their own delivery, like pizza shops and stuff. And I feel like this kind of like resentment when I walk in there mm. because like the people who are making the food are not getting tipped out on this. And then there's also like their delivery staff mm-hmm. that are like sitting there watching this oh. like free agent driver come in and pick up the food. So like, I think a lot of people don't just don't realize that like there's like actual people involved. It's not just an app and like your food just doesn't magically like get downloaded into like onto your front porch. Like there's like yeah. people involved at every step. So yeah, just tip or go get it yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much for your insight. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> I'm glad I could give some uh, elucidation. 